of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you will, the clerk, please take the roll. Council Member Wood? Here. Council Member Richardson? Present. Council Member Crossman? Here. Council Member Hess? Here. Council Member Palmer? Here. Council Member Kaminsky? Here. 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 Can I get an agenda approved? Council Member Hess? I move that we approve the agenda as presented. Is there a second? Aye. Aye. Council Member Crossman, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. Moving on to special presentations. Uh, we don't have any. Moving on to public comment. If you want to uh, address the council myself, please uh, fill out one of these blue cards. If you haven't, you can go ahead and um, get it to us after, and I'll um, just raise your hand when you want to come up and speak. Starting us off, we have Chris Woods, Superintendent. Good evening, Mayor DeBinto and council members. Thank you for uh, allowing me a couple minutes to, to speak with you. I um, wanted to talk with you briefly about our upcoming levy. And um, as you know, the first time we ran it, it did not pass. And uh, after a lot of conversations uh, with folks in the community and feedback, I think there are many reasons why it didn't pass. Um, everything from transportation issues that we've had in our school district, um, which we've uh, tried to explain to folks that that is not a funding issue, that is um, a staffing issue, but I'm happy to report that um, we are fully staffed now, and that is in large part um, due to our positive leadership at the transportation department, and people are wanting to come here now uh, because of the atmosphere and because of uh, the leadership there. I think another reason, um, people wanted transparency, and they've said, we want to know how levy dollars are spent on the document that I handed you. Um, on the bottom part, you can see how we are uh, currently spending our levy dollars. Uh, this levy will end um, at the end of December uh, 2024. And so people were asking for us to share specifically how those dollars are spent. And as you look through that list, you'll see uh, the majority of those dollars are spent towards staff. And um, without staff, we don't have programs um, we don't have quality education for our students. And so uh, transparency was was another reason. And uh, another big reason we heard is that, you know, people are tired of paying taxes and um, tired of um, having to pay more uh, for the same thing. And um, really my, my comment to that has been, um, I hope that people will not penalize our students for a broken system. Uh, I think we all admit that our funding system for public education is not perfect and it does not meet our needs. And so this is the mechanism we have to try to make up that difference through levies. And so really I'm here this evening in hopes that you as individuals um, or as a group would be willing to support uh, us as we go out and ask our voters um, to support the levy. A couple things that we'll be doing uh, in April on the back side, you'll see um, these four or five dates. Um, we will be having some forums. Um, April 9th, we'll be at the movie theater and we're gonna have three of them, one in the morning, uh, one at lunchtime, one in the evening. Uh, April 10th, we'll be at McKenna Elementary. We wanna make sure that we're hitting um, the edge of our school district where we share with uh, Pierce County and then also at Lacamas Elementary on April 11th. And we also have on there uh, an example of how uh, people would be taxed specifically. And then um, there is a QR code here that allows you to go right to our website where there is a lot more detail, about eight or nine pages more of detailed information about our levy and even a tax calculator so folks can figure out exactly how it would impact them. And the other piece that I gave you is this little card. It's got um, just some uh, bullet points, uh, some frequently asked questions and data uh, when people are asking about the levy. And a big thanks to Terry Malone, who's our Director of Communications. Um, she has been spending hours and hours 
um, putting together factual information for our community to have in response to uh, questions or concerns they may have had uh, the first time we passed the levy. So our first time we ran the levy. So uh, again, I just hope that um, our community will uh, come out and vote and support the levy uh, for our students. We have a lot of great examples of what Young know, Community Schools has done. You don't have to go very far, whether it's uh, teachers in our classrooms that also graduated from Yelm, uh, professionals in our community, uh, those who have their own business, um, those who have become doctors, lawyers, and have returned uh, back to Yelm. So you don't have to look far to see examples of successful students who uh, are successful in large part because of Yelm Community Schools and the programs that they were exposed to while they were here. With that, um, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer those. Councilor Richardson. Yeah, um, I was. Um, I love this, by the way. And I, as I'm looking at this, you know, I was aware of the arts. I was aware of the, uh, you know, the athletics, the emotional and behavior supports. But what what caught me off guard that I didn't know was included in this was uh, in the health and safety section, which is the SROs, the school resource officers. So I was, and I and I feel like as far as you know, we we should support our local police. And could you elaborate on the SROs and the school resource officers and and why that's an important thing? Yeah, and, and you're exactly right. Um, we do not get funding uh, to pay for SROs. Um, so that's something that we use our levy dollars for. Um, everywhere I've been as an educator, I have had the luxury of having SROs, whether it was principal at Capitol High School, um, I had Officer Kim Sieg, one of the very best SROs I have ever worked with when I was in uh, Tumwater, same thing, uh, great SRO program. And then I came here, and um, saw the support that we have for SROs. And uh, when Officer Moody was here, we had somebody who had been here for over 25 years. We had another police officer that was um, Officer of the Year. And then we had another officer that was also coaching bowling. So our officers are not just police officers. They are members of our staff. Um, they are part of our family. They build relationships with our students. And uh, in many times, our students go to them for advice and support. Um, so they are not there just for the physical safety, but they are also there for the social, emotional, and mental health safety of our students and our staff. And I think if you asked anybody in our district, they would tell you that they are part of our family. Councilor Crossman. Um, two questions. One, um, that I haven't heard mentioned on this round, the cap is we meet that cap or there's no way meeting that cap this time around as opposed to last time i haven't heard any mention about the cap this time around what can you speak to that a little bit I'm yeah i guess on that one yeah i can speak to that so our board um elected to uh reduce uh the ask we're asking for two dollars and 25 cents per thousand dollars of assessed value rather than two dollars and 50 cents so we do we do not um, obviously, we'll not get up to that cap. Currently, we're paying, I think it's $2.14. So from the two fifty dollars that was approved. So more than likely, we're going to be somewhere below uh, even the two twenty-five, dollars And so we would not meet that cap. Um, we certainly wouldn't meet it if they raise it uh, more than 4%, because that's the other piece our board has said. Um, we will only go 4% uh, above. Uh, and many of our surrounding districts have said they're pushing it to 8% um, and higher. So I think our board has listened to our community when they say, hey, we're tired of, of paying more. And in this particular case, it's because assessed value increased so much that we could have never predicted what, what actually happened. Uh, but our board has listened and said, okay, we're gonna reduce that. And so we'll still have cuts to make, even if um, this levy passes. And you said you had one other question. Um, so you said it's a broken system. So what are you doing to promote a way to fix that? Yeah, the, it's bigger than Yelm. Uh, this is a funding system statewide. We have lobbyists and many of us as superintendents across the state um, are meeting with our legislators. Um, they hear from us a lot. And uh, we are telling them over and over and over again, this is not sustainable. And at some point, 
um, they need to fully fund education like the law tells them they need to. And since the McCleary decision, uh, we've seen a reduction in the amount of money uh, that comes from the state. Back when McCleary was implemented, about 50% of the state budget was going to public education. Right now, it's about 43%. So it, it, it's an illustration of how what we're getting is declining um, as we see a cost of everything else rising. And so we're continuing to advocate and uh, make sure our voices are heard. And the other thing that can be helpful is if city council's uh, community also writes to our uh, legislators and our senators and lets them know that um, you know, the current system is not sustainable. Is there anything specific, like a specific bill or a specific piece that's being presented and going through, or is it just an idea at this point? Well, it's the law at this point. Um, and that I'm like, fully funding X. And okay, everybody right. come in and do X. Yes, we need to write to our legislators and senators and specifically tell them to honor the McCleary decision. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for asking. I appreciate that. Any other questions, comments? House Mayor Hess? Uh, sir, uh, just uh, because of the discussions that I've been reading going on, uh, one of the things you mentioned about transparency, and I even tried to find it, I used to be able to find the salary schedule per, per position to include administrators and such. Unable to find those at this time on the YCS web, uh, website, I have noticed that people are posting something, and this is not coming from a why it's the not coming from your site they claim it's an open source but doing research on that it's i'm going to say some of those numbers that are being posted i do not think are correct at least from what i'm looking at so what i recommend is could you please get that information out like it used to be it used to be the budget you could read the whole budget and it would say administrator uh you know various other things not names just the position that was being held Okay, so salary schedules for employees across well, the not just the salary schedules, but to well that, but also to include the secretaries, the the administrators, the the whole element of everybody. Because as I say, if you are reading the discussions and you start seeing some of that information, there's a there's a lot of uh, misinformation I think going, and it's not intentional. It's just they're grabbing it from somewhere. Okay, that's a good recommendation. So we can do that. Yeah, I just wanted to thank you for bringing up the McCleary decision because I think it's important for the public to know that in 2012, the uh, state Supreme Court found the state in contempt of uh, fulfilling their constitutional obligation to fund education. And then in 2018, levied a bunch of fines against them for still not complying. So thank you for bringing the McCleary decision out to the forefront because the state is not fulfilling their obligation. So thank you for your time today. I appreciate that. Thank you. Questions, comments? Thank you, Superintendent. Thank you. Thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Gene Coulter. Uh, Gene Coulter. I'm president of the Yelm Historical Museum. Uh, I just got a quick kind of announcement. Uh, everybody's aware, I'm sure, of the centennial this, this summer, fall. Uh, so the museum has decided to come out with a book. This book was printed in 48. But if we come out, we're going to duplicate it and put it out for sale during the centennial. Uh, it has a lot of information. It actually Young's first 100 years. So it's, it was printed uh, in 1948 by Richard and Loss. Floss, 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 Lots and Iser. They were uh, they've been, uh, educators here. Uh, in fact, he was the superintendent for a period of time. So these will be out and on sale. We're not sure yet exactly when. They're in uh, production right now. So it'll be printed sometime this summer. So it'll happen out this summer, available, and this next fall. So. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. I think Jane was there, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any other comments from the audience? Is there anyone online that wishes to testify? I don't see any hands raised online. Okay. We'll move on. 
We have a consent agenda for the March, 25th, March 5th, 2024 study session minutes, March 12th, 2024 regular meeting minutes, and approval of community event movies in the park. Is there any discussion? Excuse me. Is there uh, any motions? Councilor Wood. I move we authorize the consent agenda. Is there a second? Councilor Hess, a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. All right, moving on to new business. We have city council position for vacancy appointment and according to the procedures from the city council, um, this motion that I believe council Councilor Kaminsky will be making would um, allow for that as according to our attorney, which we have spoken about regarding procedures and making sure that council's intent is uh, for the procedure is upheld. So Council Kaminsky, is there a motion? Yes, I move to, an, to appoint a candidate to fill position five based on a straw poll and then move to appoint the top candidate with an official vote. Is there a second? Second by Councilor Hess. Is there any discussion? And before we get in discussion, this what this looks like as she stated, would we would go down starting with one end to the other, asking for your candidate that you would appoint to this to fill position four, seat four. Oh, we put the wrong. Sorry, yes. I know. <laughs> Sorry. It, it, it says four. He's more. He seconded. <laughs> yeah, he seconded. He's out. <laughs> Excuse me. I gave you the wrong script. Excuse me. Is this your four? <laughs> this is four. Um, so, again, we would go down and we would hopefully get a majority of four votes to take the seat. That person would be appointed immediately following an actual official vote, as Councilor Kaminsky said. Um, right after we would swear them in and they'd be taking the seat and they would join us for the rest of the meeting. Is there questions on the process or we have any other discussion? Councilor Crossman. So let's make sure I understand. Really. So this this is the vote that we're going down the line. Correct. We're not having a secondary it, vote. According to the motion, it would be, it's just a formality, but as long as there, we would respect, everyone would respect the, procedures that we just vote or that we are voting on now and if that is if this passes we would go down and go down the line and as soon as someone has four votes that person would be um officially they, there would be another motion correct uh if that's what you're asking to take to, uh, to make that official motion and yeah, that's from there what happens if there's not four if there's not four um we'll go down i will probably ask for another vote at that point, if council would entertain another same procedure and everything, and if because they would, you would all know it how everyone else voted at that point, and maybe um, someone would flip. And if that doesn't happen at that point, then um, we would go to um, either another another vote from a simple majority or um, yeah, a dance off. <laughs> But let's go through the process first and see if we can get there. Excuse me? Participate. Oh. <laughs> and so with that, is everyone clear with that kind of procedure? So how, how it was made, the motion was made? Okay, so any further discussion? Maybe. Terry has made the motion to clarify the, the position because her it was... It's position four. Thank you. And the second concurs. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> all right. So at this time, uh, do we have a list of all the candidates or the applicants? No. Um, all right. Is there a uh, shoot? That's where it has. Um, if we're done with discussion, we have to have the vote on her motion. Yeah. Okay. Right. Before we do that, though, I want to make sure that we have the list of all the candidates. Um, so we will say publicly, and we've said in the past, but we'll say it publicly. So council knows, the public knows, everyone watching on TV um, of who is eligible for that for the motion. Applicants include Ryan Cruz, Robert Isom, Roy Futra, Stephanie Kingister, and Griselda Arias. I pronounce his name wrong. Is everyone clear on those on those names on council? You're choosing one person um, that you would like to select for the position for. 
And at that point, we will um, we'll, we'll hopefully have a council member, but if not, we'll see. Um, so there's been a motion to second to do this, to use this procedure. And that's what we're voting on right now. So we'll do a roll call vote just on this procedure, not the actual names. Councilor Wood, how do you, Councilor Richardson, how do you vote? Yes. Councilor Crossman? Yes. Councilor Hess? Yes. Councilor Palmer? Yes. Councilor Kaminsky? Now they've been agreeing on the procedures and rules. Um, we'll go down the go down the line, um, and you will say your candidate that you wish to be on that. Um, you will you wish to be the council member that fills position for, and we'll go from there. One name, one name only, Councilor Wood. Who do you vote for? Bob Isom. Councilor Richardson. Who do you vote for? Make this difficult. Um, Stephanie Kangas. Councilor Crossman, how do you vote? Bob oh, Isom. Councilmember Hess, how do you vote? Stephanie Kanker, sir. Councilor Palmer, how do you vote? Bob Isom. And Councilor Kaminsky, how do you vote? Stephanie. <laughs> All right. Since there is no clear winner, I'm going to ask the council to go ahead, knowing how each other voted, if they would consider taking another vote on this and to get to the four needed to be a majority. If that does not happen, I will go ahead and accept nominations, um, other, excuse me, other motions. Um, so starting again, we'll start with down this side this time. Councilor Kaminsky, how do you vote? I vote for Stephanie. Councilor Palmer, how do you vote? I vote for Bob Isom. <laughs> Councilor Hess, how do you vote? This is Stephanie. Councilor Crossman, how do you vote? Bob Isom. Councilor Richardson, how do you vote? Stephanie Kangheiser. Councilor Wood, how do you vote? Bob Isom. All right. Good. Stubborn council. Now, we don't have a clear majority on this um, because this isn't a tie-breaking vote for me I because um, there isn't a motion for, if there was a motion for an individual candidate, I could break that tie. But since this is a motion with five candidates, total in there, um, there is no clear winner on this. So at this time, council can either decide to, I'll get to you in just a sec, council can uh, decide to um, move a, with a simple majority, and that person, um, if that person gets four votes, would become the next council member, or if, um, or if we can't get a majority, um, we could potentially delay this vote further until we can. All right, that being said, Council Morris, did you have? I'd like to move uh, that uh, nomination for Stephanie Kissinger uh, to fill position four. Is there a second? Second. Second by Council Kaminsky. We have a motion and a second to appoint Council Member Kingister, excuse me, Stephanie Kingister to Council seat position four. Is that the correct motion? Is there any discussion? Okay, Council, for a yes vote would be for Stephanie to take that seat, a no vote would not be. Councilmember Wood, how do you vote? No. Councilmember Richardson, how do you vote? Yes. <laughs> Councilmember Crossman, how do you vote? No. Councilmember Hess, how do you vote? Yes. Councilmember Palmer, how do you vote? No. Councilmember Kaminsky, how do you vote? Yes. Okay. There is now a 3-3 tie. I, I can decide to break this tie, and I will. I will vote for Stephanie. There is a 4-3 majority vote. Stephanie King and Sir will take the uh, uh, position four. Congratulations, Stephanie. Good job. Stephanie. Why don't you stand up there? We'll do the oath of office. Thank you. I'll say. Congratulations, Stephanie. If you would raise your right hand and repeat after me. I second King, sir. I Stephanie King. Do you solemnly swear? Do you solemnly swear? Word of 
that I will support the Constitution of the United States. And I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Washington. And the Constitution of the laws of the State of Washington. And that I will faithfully and impartially. And I will faithfully and impartially. Perform and discharge. Perform and discharge. The duties of the office of. The duties of the office of. Young City of Young City Council position number four. Young City of Young. City Council City number four. City Council position number four. According to law, to the best of my ability. According to the law, to the best of my ability. Congratulations. <laughs> Well, thank you, Council. I mean, I didn't want to break a tie. I think this is a decision for the Council. Um, tried to give multiple opportunities to get there. Um, it did not. So, um, so I broke the tie. So thank you. Um, thank you, Council and Council Member King. King is how can you pronounce your name for me one more time, please? I'm sorry. King Geyser. King Geyser. I always butcher it. Um, King Geyser. There you go. Thank you. That's very helpful. All right. That being said, you should have gotten the packet and read through it. Um, all mechanics received uh, the packet, um, understanding that they might have to take votes on this starting today. So that said, we'll move under move to new business item B, amendment number two to the professional service agreement with BCRA for conceptual design modifications of the Yelm Education and Innovation Center. Cody, I believe this is you. Yep, this is me. So council, if you remember from our last study session, we talked about the grant money that was left for the EIC and the possible changing of the, or, sorry, changing the conceptual design and kind of fleshing it out more. This is that agreement with BCRA, who's the original ones that came up with the conceptual design. This uses almost the rest of the grant money. We have a little bit of cushion there just in case there's some changes or whatever. At the end, we wanna make sure there's a little bit of space in case there's any adjustments we need. If council goes, hey, can we relook at this one more time after the final product comes back? Be happy to answer any questions about this if you would like. Is there any questions? Councilor Richardson? I move to authorize Mayor Joe DePinto to approve amendment number two to the professional services agreement with BCRA for conceptual design modifications of the Young Education and Innovation Center in the not to exceed amount of $55,975, including Washington State sales tax. Councilor Crossman had his hand up first. Second. Second by Councilor Crossman. Is there any further discussion? Councilor Wood. Um, just to, to, re, to refresh the council's memory on this, um, I think I, if memory serves, we talked about this, we decided that it wasn't something that was in our near future. And I think that with the discussion went that since we already had this grant money, that we'd go ahead and finish the design. I'm not, I don't believe that'd be real, really responsible spending of, of government money if we're, our intent is to put it on the shelf till a later date. And that, that's from experience with this type of situation in the past where we've spent money on, you know, design and on for projects uh, like the bypass and its original and its original design and, and time period. Um, I'm just wondering if that is the best move to continue with the design that we don't intend on using for a while that more than likely we'll need to go through a, a design process again. Um, do you want to talk to the point, his point about using the design? Mm -hmm. I'll talk to that. So um, I I can I understand what you're saying. I think that this design could be used in other avenues as well. So um, if there is an ex example, if part of the design could be used somewhere else, it could be modified to be a smaller design to be constructed somewhere else. So we wouldn't have to start from scratch on say the new museum part of it. We could use just that section that was designed for that and build a new museum or maybe a section of that city hall and use that in another area where it could be built. Or if council saw it and they're, you know, saw it, they wanted to proceed with this project, we have it ready to go to go for grant money to go for other things if that was what administration council wanted to do for this building. So I think we could possibly use this. I I think it won't be shelved like that, hopefully, is my hope. Councilor Hess, the Richardson. I was just gonna echo what uh, Director Colt had to say that uh, the one reason we wanna, I believe we should move forward with this is it's gonna have the, space design that if we need to get the new city hall how, to, how is it going to fit uh for the museum how's it going to fit various things like that that you put into somewhere else that's richardson and just to understand recalling back to the information that was given that 
uh, this grant money was specified specifically for conceptual design, a certain amount, and that we had us an amount left over to utilize. And when grant money is not utilized, it doesn't look good. And so when we apply for future grants, we are un unlikely to get those. Is that that's how this thing works? Yeah, and, and not exactly the word, but yeah, if you if you don't you you normally apply for a grant with the exception of using it. If you give some of that money back, normally you they don't look at that favorably, which you think would they would like. Oh, thank you for not spending the money. But often it's hey, you we want you to spend that money because now it goes back into our pool. We have to give it to somebody else, or it's too late to give it to somebody else, and they lose that money later. So yes, that grant money is specifically like this earmarked for this type of project yeah there's very specific mentions in the grant that's why we chose the eic to be revisited instead of going and designing something somewhere else other questions and comments Councilor has some direct uh also doesn't uh part of this money and if for, with this vote goes includes uh surveying of the land and things that need to still get done as well as the uh preparing for the sidewalk improvement and some of the other street improvements is that correct Correct. Yeah. So there's some things we're doing in this that would have to be done no matter what we're going to do that properly. Turn it into a parking lot, turn it into a, you know, whatever. It, we would have to do a survey. We'd have to do frontage improvements on there per our code. So we can tie those in also and kind of use this grant money to get something we would have to do no matter what we do to that property in the future. Other questions and comments? There's been a motion and second. Um, to amend uh, number two for amendment number two to the professional service screen with BCRA for the conceptual design, design modifications to the Elm Education Innovation Center. Without further discussion, let's go ahead and take a vote. Uh, Councilor Wood, how do you vote? Nay. Yeah. Councilor Richardson? Yes. Councilor Crossman? Yes. Councilor Kingizer? Yes. Councilor Hess? Yes. Councilor Palmer? Yes. Councilor Kaminsky? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, Cody. Thank you, Council. Thank you. <laughs> All right, moving on to the next item, C, interlocal agreement between Yelm, Lacey, Olympia, Tumwater, and Thurston County for housing allocation and land, excuse me, for housing allocation land capacity analysis. Gary. Thank you, uh, Gary Cooper, Planning and Building Manager. Welcome aboard. Um, so just for context, Every now and then the city needs to enter into either, um, you know, coordinate or enter into agreements with other jurisdictions, whether it's other cities or the county. Uh, when we do that, we um, sometimes we'll do like a memorandum of understanding. In this case, we are doing an interlocal agreement and we are required um, to run the interlocal agreement through the council to get your um, vote to authorize the mayor to sign it. So. That's sort of the background. Um, I will say the uh, Thurston County has already authorized the signature of this, so it's already been through their board of commissioners. So this interlocal agreement is um, really kind of step two in a process that we've discussed before. In 2021, the legislature adopted House Bill 1220, which is uh, basically requiring any city or county that's planning under growth management to do a housing um, allocation study to see uh, how many housing units we need to try to accommodate over the next 20 years at all levels of affordability. So we got a number of 7,500 housing units that we need to provide in the next 20 years. And within that 7,500, it's kind of divided up among um, low income, extremely low income, medium income, affordable. There are four or five different categories. So that was step one. We've already done that process. We did that. Uh, in conjunction with all the cities and, and Thurston County. Um, so it was a, a, a cooperative process. We came to consensus on the method we were gonna use, and then the, we used the method and that spit the numbers out that we got. The second step is we are required under the same bill to now go and evaluate our city to see whether we are currently zoned or have the land capacity to accommodate those housing units. So that's what this is about. And this is, again, it's a requirement. We have to do it. Um, we have, um, we're proposing to enter into this interlocal agreement so that we have uh, Thurston Regional Planning Council actually do the evaluation, the analysis, and uh, Yelm would be per paying a proportionate share into the cost of that project. So we would be paying 10% of the overall cost of doing this study, which is $5,433. So um, I think personally, 
think we're getting a pretty good deal because we have to do it anyway. Um, and um, so I am here to request that this uh, that the council authorize signing this interlocal agreement. Councilor Cosper. What happens if we don't allow these homes to be built? Like you said, we have to because the state mandates it. What if we tell the state to count well, hand? Uh, okay, you're above my pay grade there. Um, <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, I mean, I do know this. And for example, in doing comprehensive plans, which we're, we're also doing our update for that, um, other kinds of planning efforts that we engage in, if we are um, in violation of state mandated codes or plans or projects, we oftentimes will be ineligible for grant money. That's probably the biggest hammer that the state has over jurisdictions. They're not gonna come and throw Yelm in jail, um, but they do have various levers that they could they could pull to, you know, and make it somewhat costly for us to do some of the things that we do. Councilor Richardson. So just so I can, you know, understand this more again, this is a housing land capacity amounts, capacity yes. analysis. And it looks like we got the other cities involved, Lacey, Olympia, Toma, Tumwater, Yelm, and Thurston County. Uh, and there's a total of 134 zoning districts, and Yelm will have 14 of those zoning districts. And it's only going to cost Yelm $5,433, and this is a required house bill for 1220. You got it. Exactly right. Yeah. Oh, where else? And all that's being done right now, and also in reference to the RCW, is that we have to have a plan. It's not necessarily stating that we have to start the uh, the, the development at this time. No, uh, we don't have to develop anything. Uh, you know, so we, as you recall, we did a um, housing action plan where we had a bunch of goals. Our main um, um, sort of focus on that housing action plan because Yelm does not have a housing program or a program coordinator like some of the other cities do. So there are certain things they engage in that we're not going to. But we can do things to sort of incentivize developers to come in and build. So. And especially on the affordable housing um, issue, uh, we could offer density bonuses if you um, agree, agree to make a certain number of them, a certain level of affordability, those kinds of things we can do. So all we are required to do under the bill, and I think it's in my summary, is um, plan for and accommodate housing. So try to incentivize it and make it more doable, make it more economically feasible. Other questions, comments? Councilor Hess, I'd like to move to authorize Mayor DePento to sign an interlocal agreement for Thurston Regional Planning Council to complete a housing land capacity analysis for all levels of housing affordability in the city of Yelm as required by House Bill 1220. Second. By Councilor Richardson, is there any further discussion? We'll do a roll call vote. Councilor Wood, how do you vote? Aye. Councilor Richardson? Yes. Councilor Crossman? Yes. Councilor Ingeiser? Councilor Hess? Yes. Councilor Palmer? Yes. Councilor Kaminsky? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Gary. All right. Moving on to the do an interlocal agreement between the City of Yelm and Thurston County, authorizing Yelm to complete a permitting process on our property located partially in Thurston County. Gary, I believe it's you again. It's me. Uh, so again, another interlocal agreement. We have some parcels in the city. Um, and most cities do have this situation where they're half in the city and half in their adjacent county. Um, this particular project is next. It's uh, I think it's 805, uh, no, 407 East Yelm. Um, it's a vacant lot right now. There's a proposal to do a drive through coffee. It's uh, next to the self-service uh, car wash. So it's that lot. Well, um, we need to get authorization from the county to be able to permit this project fully because we don't want to put the applicant through a process where he's complying, you know, half of the property is complying with City of Yelm regulations and the other half is complying with the county uh, regulations, especially because the other half of the property is zoned one unit per five acres and the front half is zoned commercial. So uh, I've spoken with the county and I have to say, though, I did misstate on the earlier one. I don't think it will have affected your vote, but the one that the county commissioners have actually already approved is this one. I had them confused. Certainly I'll approve the other one too, but anyway, um, it's a very minor project. The only part that's in the county is the part where the stormwater facility is going to go. So uh, 
of a local agreement basically restricts us just to approving storm. Um, that's it. That's for cross business. Will that section be annexed into the city then? So they it, will still, this? it will still be in the county. However, I mean, as part of like looking at this issue, um, I did go back and look at the annexation laws. There, under annexation statutes, there are 10 different ways to annex a property. The ones we did last year are very cumbersome. There is also a, 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 a procedure in there where a city can adjust its boundaries through a very simple process for just this situation. So. Uh, it won't be autom automatically annexed by this, but I think that we'll probably in short order go back because there are other parcels adjacent to it or in the same situation. And basically for this kind of annexation, all we would need is a resolution from the city and a resolution from the county. So it'd be a pretty quick process. Yes, I move to authorize Mayor Pendle to sign an interlocal agreement between the city of Yelm and Thurston County to allow Yelm to complete the review and permitting process. Or a property located partially within Thurston County. Second. Councilor Palmer, is there any further discussion? All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Council. Moving on, we have a proposal to approve ordinance number 1113, establishing a franchise agreement with Consolidated Communications and Washington Company, LLC. Cody. Hello, Council, again. Um, so in front of you is a franchise agreement with Consolidated Communications. Um, this was brought up because the old franchise agreement expired. And if you have read the news, Consolidated is in the process of selling. Um, and in order to sell and get everything acclimated, they need a franchise agreement in place. A franchise agreement just allows them to maintain their infrastructure within the city right of way. So a big companies, uh, we have one with Comcast. We have one with PSC. Um, we had one with Consolidated, but it expired. So it's just to allow them to maintain their items in the right of way and not have to worry about going through arduous tasks to get to those things. Um, franchise agreements always give something to the city. So usually there's a fee or a fine or something, not a fine, a fee attached to those franchise agreements. This one, we were actually able to negotiate 20 feet of property, um, which is right next to us, that parking lot that we're building. There was a 20 foot gap that they own still. We were able to get a permanent easement over that 20 feet of property to build more parking spaces along with a sidewalk that will connect this to the alleyway so it was a good benefit so we waive the franchise fee so there's not going to be a fee charge to this franchise agreement since that easement is permanent i'd be happy to answer any questions councilman palmer move to approve ordinance number 1113 establishing a franchise agreement with consolidated communications washington company llc second, second by councilman richardson any further discussion on this all right. Um, all those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Cool. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Cody. Thank you. Is there anything you want to add, Todd? No. All right. We know old business. There's none scheduled. Moving on to standing council committee report, mm -hmm. starting with public safety. Okay. Public services committee. All right. We're meeting today. A couple of quick things. There are 22 current projects going on right now in the city, and they are listed on the website. So if you'd like to know what they are and some more information, it's all there on the website. And then second piece of super interesting information, uh, which I did not realize, that every couple of years, City of Yelm does a traffic study. As what percent would you guess that the traffic has increased in Yelm since 2017? And we want to take a stab from the audience. Can we just please keep okay. it around. <laughs> it has some fun, it some spent. It has gone down by a couple of percent, by several hundred cars a day. Uh, well, <laughs> you know those little tables that you run over, they count cars. And then, so unless somebody stopped jumping on them at one point compared to another, traffic has lessened. That was super interesting, um, which I really appreciate. I'm a guy who likes data, not feelings. Like, I feel like something's better when you have actual data. It's like, oh, okay, well, my feelings were wrong, I guess, because the data says otherwise. So that was super interesting. and. Um, the city will be producing some easier ways to keep track of what's going on with projects in the city coming out here shortly. So look forward to that. 
we really get some communication of that simple to read, look at, share, and that will be coming momentarily in the near future. Thank you, Mr. Councilmember Crossman. Finance Committee. Uh, it was uh, Councilmember Smith. Uh, is there anyone from the committee that? There's no meeting. No meeting. Okay, easy. Mayor, City Minister, staff reports. Yeah, just a couple updates. Um, Police Department graduated an officer today from the Academy, Randy Rehan, um, graduated. Um, he did really well at the Academy, was ranked in the top three overall uh, of his Academy class. Um, he will be coming to council, I believe, the first meeting in April to be introduced to everyone here. Uh, we'll start bringing in the officers as they come in to uh, introduce them to council uh, from this point forward. So we get to know who they all are. Uh, May 2nd, dog park opening. Uh, just waiting for the grass to set up. Um, hydro seated. Being hydro seated. Being, being hydro seated. Yeah, and it takes a little bit of time for it to set up so they can be uh, on it. May 24th, splash pad. We'll be pumping water. So get your bathing suits out. <laughs> and, um, we have seasonal employees starting April 1st and May 1st. And we had multiple applicants for our seasonal positions for the first time in years. Council Member Richardson. Just when you were talking about the splash pad, there was an email that was asking about the bathrooms and, and how come it's not unlocked during this time of the year. Is there an explanation for that? Yes. Cody, do you want to go explain our policies? Yeah. So we always lock, we winterize the bathrooms for the winter. Um, a lot of the bathrooms aren't heated, so we have to flush the line so they don't freeze. Um, and over the past, we've always opened the bathrooms April 1st. We did open them last weekend because of the beautiful weather, and we are going to open them this weekend again, and then they will be open for the rest of the summer till November. Um, and that's, we've done that every year, and we get, it's always because we winterize the bathrooms for the water freezing in the pipes, so. Explain that. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. That's all I got. Thank you. For me, um, I just want to first, uh, Thank all the applicants that applied for this position. Um, we had a lot of qualified folks that were, were uh, that applied. I like to see. I hope that someday you do sit up here and you continue your enthusiasm for the city. And there's always committees and commissions um, that I'd hope you would apply for. I'd love to put some more people on there. That we do have some openings currently. There's one for the salary commission, one for the perks, and one for the um, civil service as well. And I think, is there a planning commission as well? Might be, he has there a, might, he has an officially, yes. Might be the planning commission as well. But it's a lot of opportunities to serve the, your community in different ways. Um, again, thank you all for applying and going through that process. Um, I know I appreciate it. And I know council does as well to get some quality candidates here. And congratulations, council member Kingizer. Other than that, um, Met with the YMCA earlier today, kind of discussed next steps, and um, we are internally going to be hearing from our about our bond capacity and different um, revenue sources that could be possible for us here in the City of Yale. What that could look like, we're working with DA Davidson right now to come up with some of those options. We will discuss further over at the council retreat, and then publicly, well, that was public, but publicly here in a study session um, on what the council would like to do with that. We can go from there. Um, quarterly business meetings uh, will we'll continue with, on this Thursday, 6 p.m. at the community center. We'll have some staff, myself there, and um, council, of course, is invited to attend uh, open public meeting. And yeah, we have some good updates for the business community and what's going on here that we're doing to help make y'all more, more business friendly. Lastly, we will have a immediately following this Council meeting, a closed session for union bargaining. We will be chatting with council about parameters for union bargaining, and that is a closed meeting. And um, so immediately after this, we'll ask uh, the public to go ahead and vacate this area. We'll take a five or 10 minute break for council, and uh, we'll come back. That's all I've got. Any questions for me? All right. Council member reports, starting with council member Kaminsky. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Uh, some little extra ideas. We had a public services that uh, Josh didn't mention is maybe putting in the budget for the painting of this building in the next round. Um, and maybe we had um, pump tracks in a plan in the past to go along the trail, the new one that we're building. And we thought maybe it'd be fun to do some of those in the future. And uh, actually adding bathrooms to the dog park after it's open. 
So we talked about those things. Uh, Nisqually River Council talked about the 50th anniversary of the Nisqually Reach and what a, an amazing outfit that is there on the waterfront. If you've never been on the Sound, it's on the estuary. It's really a beautiful place. Um, we talked about 6PPDQ, which has come up in the in the news before. It's the chemical anti-degradation chemical that's found in tires and it holds the tires together when it's um, subjected to ozone. So this, this chemical in the tires it is what degrades on the highways and goes into our water streams. So they did a big study and guess what? All the salmon are dying from these chemicals. No surprise. So the state of the fish, according to the Squally River Council, is that uh, the Chinooks are doing fine. Uh, the cohos have a 100% mortality rate when they're subjected to this chemical. And now the chum are in an endangered state. So that's the news on the fish. The other thing that's in danger is the what they call the skill of fishing. A lot of the Indian tribes, the Skalamish people, their generations of native fishermen have always had the skills to fish and now they just don't even use them. So they were saying anybody can fish in August, but there's a skill to when the snow comes out and it's freezing and it's a whole different ball game to catch a fish when it's cold. So they're saying that they're literally losing this art, which was kind of an interesting point I hadn't thought about. So uh, then about the fish, they talked about the 12 bills that they wrote while they were on a fishing boat in the session with JT Wilcox and the gang. I think they passed one of those bills. And the other fun fact is that I didn't know is that our waters have mahi-mahi in them and also um, bluefin tuna. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. That's my fish report. Thank you, Councilor Kaminsky. I do want to add one thing that I forgot to mention my report that um, I am appointing Councilor Kaminsky um, to join Councilor Crossman, myself, and a few others on the um, 640 acres RFP committee. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on, Councilor Palmer. Uh, yes, I had an EMS meeting and they, uh, they're still looking for applicants for Medic One. Uh, they got six qual. These ones, but they they need many more. So if anybody's a medic or EMT, apply to medic one. Uh, we're also moving our meetings to the fourth Thursday at one p.m. starting April. So that was to accommodate the uh, Thurston County Commissioner, so they were able to attend the meetings. And other than that, um, yeah, they're just working on recruiting and keeping keeping medic one running. Councilor Palmer, Councilor Hess. Uh, yes, uh, for Inner City Transit Authority. Uh, there was approval for some surplus vehicles to be um, sold off. Uh, one of them was a vehicle that was involved in an accident where the cost of repairs was a lot more than what the value of the vehicle was. So they've uh, also uh, called that a loss. Uh, they had National Transit Employee Day, which was really good. It helped celebrate the uh, people who bus drivers and everybody who is doing work. Uh, bus Buddy Program, it's 10 years old. And for those that like more information about it, they have a wonderful website on the Inner City Transit Authority about it. It's basically somebody who will help you. They're volunteers. They will help somebody who doesn't understand the bus system how to get around and help them out. And then also uh, Inner City Transit with their Walk and Roll Program, in particular the bike shop. They're looking for volunteers uh, to help Parts together. They have the parts, they have the tools, they just need the manpower to be able to do that. Uh, so if you're interested in doing that, please reach out to them. Uh, the Housing Authority of uh, Thurston County, um, I received their annual report, 2023 report. Uh, their good news is that 296 households were newly admitted to voucher rental assistance program. 136 households lifted out of homelessness with voucher support for as long as eligible. 28 new units were constructed, 12.6 million in grant awards for senior housing development, two new operating subsidy agreements with nonprofits, creating over 120 new units, 24 staff members all dedicated to this work, and 25 years of a clean audit. Uh, they, they've been doing some good things and being uh, if responsible with the revenues that they receive, if they can. 
Uh, also, I would like to say, seeing as the end of March, in honor of March being the Women's History Month, I want to thank uh, the women that are in leadership positions that are setting the example, such as Council Council Member Kaminsky and now Council Member uh, Ken Geiser. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, setting the example for uh, the future generations, along with all those women that are holding CEO, C suite as manager, whatever it may be. And as my mom has always reminded me, also the women who show that they they do have a choice. They can stay home and become the best moms that they want to be, or they can go work. So appreciate all that. And then the last thing I'd like to talk about is uh, a community member that passed away last month, uh, Eric Hyde. Uh, he was a supporter of veteran organizations. He also supported the community schools, was, did a lot of things within the, uh, with his church. Uh, we, we uh, Special Forces Association uh, had a good uh, service for him uh, with his remembrance, and there's going to be another activity for uh, those who weren't able to make it to the actual uh, his funeral. So that's all I have at this time. Elsewhere has Elsewhere King has there. If you have a report, uh, if you want to say something, feel free to. You don't have to. Uh, <laughs> I don't really know what to. Say stay in this little spot, so I'll pass this time. Fair enough. Surely you guys will all share what <laughs> It's good. Councilor Crossman. All right, so attended steady last Friday, which was held in Rainier, and the thing I found most interesting I got from it that I would like us to look at at the city to do as well is Thurston County has what they call a Friday Five, so if you can go up and sign up, you get emailed a newsletter and there's five things every week that's going on in the county. So be it government meetings, um, projects that's being worked on, events. Um, every Friday you get sent out, there's five things and it's very concise and easy to read. I thought it was a super great idea. I think it'd be really beneficial if we could do it as a city as well. Um, you know, like say, they just go, you just go on Thurston County website. If you Google Thurston County Friday Five, it pulls right up in the Google search because that's how I found it. Because I didn't scan the little QR code they had, but you um, can do it that way. To that point, we are doing something, or we're going to be doing some kind of recap in the city council meetings. Um, what or given prepping what's on the agenda so people can have a can know what's up with that. But yeah, it's also a good idea. Since we're in Thurston County too, it's a good idea to sign up for both. Yeah, absence. Uh, we come across a lot of those projects. Uh, so that was pretty cool. And then I attended an AWC class just for fun, Local Decision Making and Ethics 101. I covered three topics. One of history, uh, we're a home rule state. Washington's like one of the first to enact home rule, which means that cities can do almost what they want besides that doesn't break constitution or state law. So we have a lot of freedom as a city um, to make laws and stuff to do what we want to do. Um, Washington's first kind. Then we talked about the types of cities and how they operate in the state of Washington. And then finally, ethics. And unfortunately, I can't mandate that all the government buildings be covered with wood flooring and not be the one to do them. Apparently it's a conflict of interest for me, so I was kind of bummed. Uh, I'm not really. And then a uh, big thanks to all the individuals picking up trash along our roadways. I noticed uh, 507, as you come to the Elm, the other day when I was coming in, there were a bunch of trash bags and it was all cleaned up, looked really good. And then the other day when I was headed out uh, the bypass, there was a couple families that had picked up a bunch. Was that you? Our scouts. All right, scouts, good job. <laughs> I noticed it was noticed by other people in the community. It looked really good, and I uh, also appreciate and thank you for doing that. That's a, that's really good. There we go. All right. Thanks, Councilmember Cosman. Council Richardson. I can't express how grateful I am to the applicants. Um, I wish every election and every appointment was this difficult because we had such great decisions. So thank you so much for, for putting your name in, and also great thank you to this council. Um, you got stubborn. That just is another word for committed. Um, thank you for, for doing your job and doing it well. I feel like we are doing a good thing here and we're putting good people in place because we've got good people that are applying for these positions. Thank you. 
Thank you, Councilmember Richardson. Councilmember Wood. I attended the Transportation Policy Board a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we spent the first half of the meeting discussing uh, maintenance, upkeep, and cost of the bike paths system here in the county. And the second, we went over a study that the state commissioned to study non-driving citizens. And in a nutshell, it turns out the majority of the non-driving citizens we have don't drive because they can't afford a car. And they, and it's rather than taking uh, the, uh, the the public transit system, the majority of them get rides from friends and families. That's what I got. That's why the traffic's decreased. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it works. All right. With no executive session scheduled, take a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Is there a second? Council, a motion. Is there a second? Take away, Councilman Kaminsky. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. We are adjourned. Council, don't forget to stay here, though. We do have a vote.